Hey guys, I'm Val. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a Wernado build that I made. I don't think there's any Tornado build out like this. This build does require one unique and that unique is the Tempest Roar. If you're lucky enough to get it early on, this is probably the best leveling build there is this season for Druid. This build's different from others because we rely on our max life to increase our spirit regeneration. We do this by using the undying aspect and the starlight aspect together. And because I do have 60,000 life, I'm healing for at least 6,000 each time I use Tornado. As you can see here, I was at 20,000 life, give or take. I use Tornado, and I'm at 29,000 life. I use Tornado again, I'm at 37,000 life. Again, 44. 50. 56. Right here I have 42,000 life, but then I use this elixir, 20% more life, that puts me at 50,000 life. Then I use this quest elixir, that ends up putting me at 60,000 life, they stack. You could also use these for leveling, it gives you more experience. While leveling, and in the beginning stages of this build, you're most likely going to have to use a resource cost reduction elixir. But one of the main goals with the build is to not have issues with spirit. So to get this quest elixir, you just go to the alchemist, and it's under the quest tab. Elixir of anti-venom. It gives you 15% max life, 20% poison resist, and 8% experience. It's very good for leveling. I actually just found out about it a few days ago when I was making adjustments to this build. For the abilities, I'm using Trample. You will gain back spirit when using this, but you do not want to use it unless you're crowd controlled. It's a last resort. It's our only way to get out of CC. For the next ability, I'm using Blood Hell. You heal for 20% of your life, which at this point was 12,000. Kills reduce the cooldown of Blood Hell, so I can spam it. And it also gives us 20 spirit back on use. The goal for this ability is to switch into the attack speed on use. This build relies heavily on attack speed. And then we have all the companion abilities to get the 15% damage buff from each. You're not going to be using these besides Ravens. And then for our main ability, Tornado. Each time you cast Tornado, you have a 20% chance to spawn an additional Tornado. Enemies hit with Tornado have a 10% chance to become vulnerable. At the moment, I'm still reducing the spirit cost. And then there are a few different things I want to try, like adding spirit regeneration and adding lucky hit into the build. For the spirit bones, I'm using wariness. You take 15% reduced damage from elites. Iron feather, because we're focusing on our life. Even wrath for 30% critical strike damage. And at the moment, I'm using energize, but ideally this point would be moved to bolster later on to help with fortify. For the last spirit boon, I'm using Masochistic. This is the third way that we heal in this build. It's not necessary, but there's no other boon that's useful to the build in this tier. For the gear, I'm using Tempest War for the helm. This is mainly to keep us in werewolf and to make our storm skills werewolf skills. For the chest, I'm using Juggernauts. You gain armor, but your evade has 100% increased cooldown. You could use Disobedience as well. For the gloves, we're using Stampede. Gain one additional companion. This is just to increase our flat damage from 45% to 60%. On the legs, I'm using Undying. When you cast a skill, you heal for 2% life. Double this below 50% life. For the boots, I'm using Exploiters. You deal up to 40% increased damage to unstoppable enemies. For the tempering, Digital Grade Gate is going to be the focus here. For the weapon, the aspect I'm using is Storm Chasers. Tornado will seek up to three targets. For the tempering, the priority is going to be chance for tornado projectiles to cast twice. And then for the rest of the gear, the tempering is going to be preferably damage to close enemies. And I'll explain that in the Paragon board. For the offhand, I'm using accelerating. Critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed by up to 25%. The tempering is going to be the same as the main hand. Chance for tornado projectiles to cast twice. And damage to close enemies. For the first ring, I'm using the starlight aspect. You gain up to 40 of your primary resource for every 20% of your life that you heal. For the tempering, resource cost reduction and damage to close enemies. For the second ring, the aspect is going to be the changeling's debt. You deal up to 55% increased damage while hitting a crowd controlled enemy as a werewolf. You're going to want resource cost reduction and damage to close here as well. And for the amulet, I'm using the Shepherd's Aspect. Core and Rest skills deal an additional 15% damage per companion. And we are going to have four companions, so it's going to do 60% more damage. And the tempering priority for the amulet is going to be Digigrade Gate and damage to close enemies. For the skill tree, the basic skill, I have one point in wind shear and one point in enhanced wind shear. This can be used while leveling, and this is just to unlock the core abilities. For the core skills, I'm going to put five points in Tornado, one point in enhanced and raging Tornado. One point in the Heart of the Wild, three points in the Wild Impulses, three points in the Predatory Instinct. And right here I have zero points. The ten points are from my Boots and Amulet. You could get up to twelve points into Digitigrade Gate for free. This pretty much maxes out your movement speed. For the defensive skills, I have one point in the Blood Hell, one point in Enhanced, and Innate Blood Hell. The goal is to use Preserving Blood Hell later on to increase our attack speed. And while leveling, you will be using Ancestral Fortitude. For the Companion skills, you're going to put one point of Wolves, one point of Poison Creeper, one point of Ravens, Enhanced Ravens and Ferocious Ravens. 
three points in the nature's reach. And then for the rascals, you're going to put one point into elemental exposure, one point into charged atmosphere, and three points into electric shock. This is another big part of the build. Dealing lightning damage to enemies has up to a 24% chance to immobilize them for three seconds. If the target is already immobilized, the lightning damage dealt to them is increased by 21% instead. This is why we're going to focus on immobilize and the tempering, because it's going to increase our damage by 21%. This can be applied to your boots, pants, gloves, and chest. One point in trample, enhanced trample, and savage trample. One point in neurotoxin, toxic claws, and in venom. For the ultimate skills, three points into defiance. 3 points in a natural disaster, 3 points in resonance, and 3 points in a circle of life, 3 points in the quick shift, and 2 points in the heightened senses. And for the key passive, I'm using Lupine Ferocity. Every 6 werewolf skill hit critically strikes and deals 70% increased damage, increased to 140% against injured enemies. Lupine Ferocity with attack speed allows for the build to not have to invest any points in the critical strike chance. I will show you a short clip of how this works. So in this clip, just pay attention to the buff bar and the Lupine Ferocity and how often you're getting free crits from this key passive. I'm going to show you some additional gameplay just so you get a better idea of how the build works. This is a tier 80 Nightmare Dungeon and it's a few days old. I've made a lot of changes to the build, but you'll get the basic idea. For the Paragon board, you go up and to the right to get the rare node Prime for damage and life. For the Glyph, I'm using Spirit. Critical strikes increase the damage an enemy takes from you by 2%, up to 12%. You need to go back down and get Tenacity for more life and armor. You're going to go up and to the left to get Impel, 20% damage. The next board is going to be Ancestral Guidance. I am taking the Legendary node here. You're going to grab all the plus Spirit on kill and max Spirit. You're going to go to the right to get more max Spirit and life. And then I go up and get Harmony for extra core skill damage. The Glyph is Fang and Claw, Wall and Werewolf or Werebear form. Close enemies take 12% increased damage from you. I get extra resist here, then I go up to the next board. 
which is Thunderstruck, you are going to be taking the Legendary Node here. Storm Scales deal increased damage equal to 20% of your damage versus close and damage versus distant enemies. This is why I'm going to focus on damage versus close, because most enemies that we will be attacking are close to us, and it also buffs our Thunderstruck. The damage to distant enemies starts out at a higher rate than damage versus close, but it's not as useful because we're more likely to be closer to them than we are to be further away from them. I grab the Rare Node Tempest for critical strike damage and vulnerable damage, the Rare Node Deluge for increased critical strike damage and damage to crowd controlled enemies, Hubris and Stormcaller, and the Glyph is going to be Exploit. When an enemy is damaged by you, they become vulnerable for three seconds. Then I go up to the next board, which is Constricting Tendrils. I do not take the Legendary Node. The Glyph is going to be Earth and Sky. This is to buff all the extra life nodes here and the Nature Magic nodes as well. And then then I'm going to go to the right and grab the extra damage to elites. And then I go back down to the Thunderstruck board and go out the left side. The board's going to be Lust for Carnage. I do take the Legendary Node here. Critical Strikes with Werewolf Skills restore two Spirit. The Glyph is going to be Territorial, which gives us damage reduction and gives us more damage to close enemies, which increases our damage from Thunderstruck. Then I go back to the Thunderstruck board and down to the Ancestral Guidance board. I go out the right, it's going to be the Heightened Malice board. This is always going to be the last board in any variation of this build because we're only here to grab the Legendary node and the damage to elites. While there are three or more poison enemies nearby, you deal 45% increased damage. You grab the life nodes here and then above this is a damage to elites, which brings us to a total of 64% increased damage to elites. For the build review, it's actually really fun to play. But if you're lucky enough to get a Tempest Roar early on, this is going to push you to the end game immediately. I didn't step into a Nightmare Dungeon at all at this point. I was able to clear 80s at the start. I'm still working on the build. Also, after the spirit issues are resolved, I need to work Fortify back into the build to make it twice as tanky. I kind of took it out because it was causing problems with the undying aspect, but I think I just had too much Fortify at that point, and I wasn't taking any damage, which helps you get your spirit back quicker. I still want to try a spirit generation, lucky hit, and some other variations in the build. The work in progress, but the healing, the, the life, the tankiness, it's a different build. For one, you don't need crit because of the key passive. Then we focus on our max life to increase our spirit, which is, you know, knocking out two things at once. I think this could be a really good build in the end. I don't know what to call it yet either, if you guys have any ideas. As of now, I'm going with Vampiric Wernado. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll have a leveling variation in the written guide in case you do get Tempest 4 early on and want to try this while leveling. Thank you for watching. I appreciate the support and I'll see you guys next time.